Hi everyone. I hope you all are staying safe in these scary times. Um, today I'm going to be talking to you about Carolyn Shaw. As many of you probably already have heard of her, she's done a lot of different uh, voice vocal pieces and she's written for chamber groups as well. Um, a little bit of background about her, if you haven't already heard of her. She was born August 1st, 1981. She started playing violin around the age of two. She was taught by her mother. That was her first teacher, actually. And then she started composing music at 10 years old, which is very impressive. And she was inspired a lot from chamber music by Mozart and Brahms. Then she went on to do her BM in violin performance at Rice and then her master's in violin at Yale. Then she um, completed her PhD in composition at uh, Princeton in 2010. And so right now she um, is teaching at NYU and she is a creative, what is it? A creative associate at uh, Juilliard. And although she's a violinist, she's written and performed many vocal pieces. So I, I consider her a singer as just as much as a violinist. Some of her accomplishments would include um, her recent commissions for new works for Renee Fleming and Dawn Upshaw. She's uh, commissioned work um, for uh, the Orchestra of St. Luke's, um, the Dover Quartet, the Crossing, um, the Mendelssohn Club of Philadelphia, um, the Baltimore Symphony, and then her own vo um, vocal ensemble, Roomful of Teeth. And um, with Roomful of Teeth, she was actually the youngest recipient of a Pulitzer Prize for her piece, um, Partita for Eight Voices, uh, in 2013 at age 30, um, which was very incredible. Um, impressive. I was shocked to hear that. Um, so I'm going to be talking to you today about her piece Partita for Eight Voices, which she wrote for her group Roomful of Teeth. Um, when I was looking up some of the things that she said about her process when she writes her music, um, this was a very interesting quote to me. She said, I write for choirs and voices because I love it. I think I also write empathetically for the voice because I've done it. I'm not interested in writing some cool pieces just to impress people. I'm writing to give the singers something to do together. And I thought it was really interesting how she always is wanting to incorporate a sense of unity within all of her compositions. So with Partita for Eight Voices, this was a um, 25, 26 minute um, piece with four movements for a cappella voice and it was loosely structured around the stylistic movements of instrumental baroque dance suite and so that was very interesting for me um which is why I picked it because I saw how she always is using older music to inspire her compositions since ever since she first started writing music and also I picked it because this is the piece that she's most known for. So Partita is pretty simple in rhythmic and harmonic construction, but it derives complexity and individuality from um, Shaw's use of extended techniques. And she creates a very unique and new um, vocal um, like soundscape. So like the piece has a lot of like places where there's spoken word, timbral and phonetic shifts and a variety of techniques used from like non-Western practices such as Tuvan and Inuit throat singing. And um, there was also something about Korean storytelling, which I think is called um, Pansori gesture. I'm, And yeah, so there was a lot of other elements that she includes in her pieces too. There's, there's like a lot of different textures and layers in all of the movements. So much of Partita was written using a spatially spread, like seamless note head. 
so that it could encourage improv improvising and um in in leaving a lot to interpretation amongst the members performing the passage and it allowed a lot of like freedom of gesture through doing that so now i'm gonna um, play part of the first movement this is alamong to the side to the side to the side and around through the middle to end. the side to the side to the side and around through the middle to end. the side to the side to the side to the side and around and around and around and around to the middle to the side two three four and five six, six seven eight through the midpoint of the line drawn from the left side and around 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 So the reason that I picked that specific passage was to show how diverse the musical style and technique and timbre were in the piece um, just in a short amount of time since, as you heard, that was just one minute of the, the first thing that you hear in this um, piece. And I really loved listening to the whole thing. You should listen to the whole thing if you have time. I think is definitely worth it because I really loved the second movement, Sauerbaum, because there was a lot of layering of sound through, um, and it created these very um, crisp overtones where it was like ringing and gave me chills. And I would really love to perform her music. I actually was supposed to perform her music with um, KC, but um, it was for a lecture recital we were going to perform to the hands, but it got uh, postponed till next semester. So unfortunately, I won't be able to perform that, but I would love to perform some of her pieces in the future. <laughs> 